Okay, guys, here we are. I am with John O'Rumbelo, the CTTA head ref and the events coordinator, who's been long dodging this role because he's been too busy in his running shop. But he's uh, probably the most jacked, most passionate, lucky guy in the Western Cape who adores triathlon. I've been seeing him at races for, I don't know, 20 years. He loves it. Very, very into it, into the experience of the athletes, very much on the athlete side, not trying to be a policeman. So thank you, Jono, on behalf of us and CTTA and Triathlon. Oh. Uh, welcome on board. So thanks for joining. Yeah. So I'm going to jump straight into race briefing. I've had uh, people in the past saying, oh, your race briefings are so lucky. I learned so much. They tip about the wetsuit and they tip about keeping my heart rate even and what to eat. And people just love it, which I love the feedback. It's great that you can pick my 30 years plus of being into the sport. But there are others who say, mate, my life is too short to sit and listen to your waffle. It's boring. It's old school. Just give me the basics and let me move on. So we're trying to talk to both camps. And in this case, I'm going to try and keep that stuff to a minimum. But we've got a Friday afternoon and a tomorrow afternoon Q&A for people who want to know more. I'm really, really happy to sit with all those beginners and the more experienced people who want to know more about how to make your race day amazing. Because you want to do your best regardless whether you're aiming to be Western Province champion your age group and go to SA champs and world champs, or if you're just coming out to finish a big day out. It doesn't matter. You're all the same. And on that point... Obviously, if 30 odd years of commentating and being at races, I've got to know a lot of faces much better than others. Some's names <laughs> always escape me. Others I've never met who recognize me. Apologize if I don't recognize your name. I'm hoping the timing guys will give me a really cool big screen where I can <laughs> see without my glasses and I can see exactly who you are and I can give you a high five when you cross the line. But uh, you're all equally important and we'd hate to think that anybody is perceived as lesser than <laughs> others, even though they are, and I've got to give them high fives, to the, the four, or I would call them the three stooges or the four musketeers, the, the, the guys, Mike and the team, they've, uh, Paltrit and co, been with us from the first race we ever had. We adore them. They are in their 60s now. I think some are 50, oh, wow. there are a couple in their 60s, and I think Nick's oh. getting closer to 70. <laughs> Sorry, guys, if you could just mute. If, if, if you could just mute your mics, please. <laughs> Um, Sheila and Dirk, if you can just mute your mics, if you don't mind, if everyone can just mute, mute your mics. So to the, to the mics of the world, etc. absolutely love you being here. We're going to cater to everyone. We've got prize giving right up into the 60s, which we didn't have in the past. As I think Clive Charles pointed out, racing is getting older. Athletes are getting older because 50 is the new 20 and people are strong and they do triathlon well into the 80s, as we've seen with the likes of Ian Eady. So we're jumping in. This is the 2023 Blue Lagoon Triathlon at Langebaan. It's the race briefing. We kick off race registration tomorrow. We've got another one on Friday and then race day on Saturday. So we want to talk through all the different things you might or might not want to know. Stop me at any stage. Just unmute and just put your finger up and I'm happy to answer a question if you need. All right. So, oops. There we go. Race week. Cape Town Reg tomorrow at the Hellenic Community Center in Greenpoint, not at the Hellenic Football Club up the West Coast in Bloberg somewhere, which have one or two people typed in uh, Hellenic Club and they got the soccer club. This is at the Community Center, right next to the Cape Town, the big fat stadium, the athletic stadiums, all that. It's very easy to find. It's right near John O'Connor Cycles. It's just off Beach Road, very near the lighthouse. Lots of parking and there's food there as well. You'll find us in one, big, one of the big rooms with a flag outside. The next one will be at Langebone. That'll be on Friday, the 10th. That starts at 4 and finishes at 7.30. So people who are running late, yes, we'll probably hang around till 8 if you're desperate, but please try and be there by 7.30. We've all got to get uh, a lot done at night and be up early. Tomorrow's one is from 2.30 to 6. There's no timing chip at tomorrow's registration. We've had... 12 years of working with timing chips and the number of timing chips that have gone missing. People said, I promise I'll drop it at your offices. I'll courier it. I'll do this. I'll do that. And they, they charge us 500 Rand plus for a timing chip. We just can't afford to give them to Cape Town people who then up to 10% of people won't arrive in Langebaan. And that's a lot of chips to try and get back. So we won't be doing chips tomorrow. You'll get your chip on Saturday, on Friday afternoon at registration at any stage when you arrive, or you can get a friend to collect. Obviously, you can get a friend to register and collect your timing chip. 
The only thing we won't do is register you on Saturday morning. We've just got way too much going on. It's too much of a of a sideshow. It's just not an inconvenience of note for everybody. So you can start, you can rack your bikes and you can head down and I'll talk you through it, but you can fetch your timing chip from the Athene Conference Center, either before or after you rack your bike. It'll be down and I'll show you a map how to get there just now, but you can pick it up on Saturday morning if you happen to be one of those athletes who doesn't know anybody already there and isn't is driving up on Saturday morning and not at registration um, on Friday. So Langebon, there it is, at the Athene Center at Club Mykonos. Both the triathlons are on Saturday, the 11th, and the open water swims are on Sunday, the 12th. So firstly, to John and Liesl and the team at Club Mykonos, I just want to say a huge thanks. It's, this has been the home of triathlon since the 80s. Um, in the Western Cape, we had SA Champs, African Champs. We've had numerous World Cups, so many events there. Stopped, sadly, when they built the Lagoon Beach Mall because the road was cut off. And then five, six years ago, they built a new road to Saldana past Caro. We immediately put in a, re a request to start the race over again. <clears throat> new management had taken over. Amazing bunch of guys. John is a actor, lacquer guy, sports lover from Grey PE in the Eastern Cape. And he has cleaned that place up from any of the sort of days when the gambling casino people could get onto the beach. It's now slick. Well oiled, the restaurants have all had a refurb. The place is looking amazing. You're going to love it. So thank you to Club Mykonos, who for the last five years have been our very generous and amazing hosts that we work closely with. We, this is how it works on the day. This is an aerial map taken in the middle of a very hot summer by the looks of it. It's not, not, not looking its best, but you can see here. The, you, this is the road, if you can see my cursor. This is the road coming from the in from the coastal road and actually from basically the, it's the route itself but it's the route when you come into Langebaan if you don't come through the west coast national park which is very unlikely on race day because obviously it'll be closed until seven so you'll be coming up the west coast road the r27 as you come down towards Mykonos you'll see a turn off i mean towards Langebaan you'll see a turn off towards Mykonos Caro school Sardana it's a beautiful wide smooth brand new road turn there, and then you'll come down here towards the entrance. At that circle is the registration for those staying overnight, those staying at Mykonos. And thank you very much for everyone who booked. They've sold out of rooms, I think, three or four weeks ago. So you'll register there. You'll pick up your key. You'll be given your parking, which is up there, <clears throat> or on the other side if you're staying this side. You'll then go into the estate. So that's the registration for overnighters. People coming in, Apart from that, day visitors, you'll come in the gate to the second gate on this side, also around the same circle, and you'll come to our big parking area here. It's a big field. Okay, most of you will be directed there because this parking here next to Transition is a bit smaller. But if you are there before six, you can park there next to Transition. So you'll then come in. You'll then go down the left side, just like you will on the bike later. You'll come through the parking area. I mean, through the, the, this large parking area. You'll park here and transition will be in front of you. Okay. Anyone coming between six and seven, you'll be sent directly in. Very little difference. Actually, quite practical, because afterwards, you finish the race, it's closer to go fetch your stuff out of the car here. It's quite close to the restaurants, etc. So you'll park your car here. You'll then follow this white line, past the casino, which is here, past the entrance, which is there. You'll take the straight line through and into transition. Okay. All right, um, Samsung MSG, if you can just turn your phone onto uh, uh, computer onto mute. Right, so any parking after seven o'clock and specifically 7.15, they, they're going to close between potentially seven and quarter past seven because the main race starts at seven. You will probably not be able to drive down this road. Okay, and that means <clears throat> you're going to have to park at the mall, the Lagoon Beach Mall, and you're going to have to walk a kilometer down to Mykonos and then that becomes your parking for the day until after the race. So please, I have spoken. I know some people aren't going to be watching this race briefing. Let your friends know. If you're not spending the night, you're going to have to leave very early if you want to park inside Mykonos. Okay. There are the parkings. If you're a day visitor, if you're over weekend, you've got your own parking place inside. Please don't plan to drive anywhere. Keep your car parked until after prize giving on Saturday. Right. There's transition. I hope we're clear. There's the swim exit, just by the way, while you're looking at a nice big map. There's the swim start. For, all the, for both races, and there's the Athene Conference Center where you're going to fetch your timing chip on Saturday morning or at registration on Friday afternoon. 
When you come to registration on Friday afternoon, just so you know, and I'm not lost, don't go looking here. You're just going to find a whole lot of racks and people putting up branding. We'll be here. You can park here, which is for those who've been doing Blue Lagoon for many years, this is the old transition area. Right on the water, it was beautiful, but it only took 300 bikes and we've more than doubled that now. So we are no longer using that, which means runners, you now have this road to yourselves. There's no bikes coming down here with runners coming up. It was a bit crazy in the old days. It was good here, but it was too crowded. So we've now got an enormous transition area, lots of space, and only the runners can run here without being in danger of cars. Right, on to the next slide. So here is transition. Uh, for, you obviously saw where I showed you where the sea was. You've come out of the swim exit. You come up the beach. There were, the guys at Mykonos did, made a huge effort last year to put down fresh sand on top of the pathway up. They put little pebbles down the edges. We put fencing up. We did a hell of a lot to ensure that this was comfortable, but there were still a couple of devil keys, little table thorns, and they can creep in from anywhere. A kid can walk across with slip slops, pick one or two up over here or over here and drop one in, uh, overnight. So just watch your feet. I don't think it's worth leaving slip slops because running in slip slops on sand is very, very hard. Just watch your feet, but they're making a very big effort to avoid that this year. As you come in here, there'll be a water trough like there was last year. Dip your feet, get the sand off, everything else. Run down the past, past the tent where you would have, in the morning, come for coffee. You would have heard me jabbering away from in there. Uh, this is our sort of gathering tent. It's not going to rain. It looks like mist on the morning on a northwester. But this will be the social tent, the social area, etc. You're going to run past here. You're going to come into the back of transition. It's only one transition area this year. One big transition area. Not two, like they were last year. This was separated last year with fencing. There were two specifically separate transition areas because of COVID. We had rules and laws about how many people could be in the same place. Thank God those days are gone. We're back to one big transition area. There is a gap between the two. This is standard try. This is sprint try. Okay? I don't know why they've called them VIPs. You're all VIPs. These are seeded athletes. Okay? They've been given numbers, race, race numbers 1 to 25. You know who you are if you look at the athlete list. There might be one or two. I know there are a couple of sprint juniors who weren't originally on the list when I did the seedings. If they feel very, very, very positive about being in the top 25 of the field overall, feel free to give me a shot. I've left a little bit of buffer zone for those sort of people. Okay, so don't be shy to say, I think I'm in with a chance of a top 20 overall because I'll put you in there. Just don't be the one who's left behind when the pack shoots out of swim start. Okay, so those people with seeded numbers 1 to 25, and you'll see your seeded numbers at the front of the sprint, because um, there'll be marks on the end of the racks, there'll be little white boards with race numbers ranges from, say, 300 to 380 or 400. It'll say that on the end. So find your rack, first come, first serve, give each other space. You definitely want to leave. I've given you half a meter each. You only need 350 mils. So for a handlebar or a saddle. John, I'm going to ask you now, maybe John Rumbelow, I prefer people using handlebars if it's windy because saddles are precarious. If a bike blows a little bit in the wind with a saddle over the handle, over the over the, um, the bike racks, they tend to fall off. I find brake hoods more stable. Can we maybe say that it's up to the athlete if, he, if he's happy to put his brake hoods over or on the other way around, put his saddle over or hers? Yeah. If there's no wind, the athletes can go and rack it how they want. Um, but if there is wind on the day, we will make that call and the athletes will be told when they go into transition, when they actually check their bikes in, we'll actually you know, tell them when they're checking in that they have to uh, rack it with their handlebars if we feel that the wind is going to cause you know, major mayhem, especially with some of the more expensive bikes that some of the athletes are actually using at the moment. Okay, brilliant. Thank you very much. So there are there are people whose handlebars don't have the brakes hoods that are able to go over a over a, a tri bar. I mean, over a bike rack. Then obviously you have no choice. But I'm just saying, when it's on a bike, when it's on a saddle, it does have the potential to wobble. It's not a very secure fit in one place. So there's you'll see a, a demarcated area. There will be stickers on the bike racks with one to twenty five on each of those. So you've got your de designated spot. So. Brad Weiss, Matt Troutman, Vicky van der Merwe, Martin Jekart, et cetera. You're all there. Same thing with the guys in the, in, the, in the sprint. So when you come in, bike check-in and out is through here. 
Okay, you would have parked over there somewhere. You're going to walk in here. You're going to rack your bike in the right place. You obviously go down here and down that side. These are the ins and outs. We'll have something down the middle to stop the two transitions from being um, amalgamated, but that'll only be put there after the standard guys have left for the beach. So you then check in, check out the same way in and out. You put your bike box down. We'll talk a bit about the box just now. Next to your bike with everything in, there's no plastic bags and there's no bag racks. Okay, we've got plastic free, obviously single use plastic. I mean, a bike box from Addis or Mambo's or one of those places, nice big large bike box is something you can use for the rest of your sporting career. They don't wear out. Okay, not that easy to walk with a bike and a big bike box. We know that. Maybe you've got a partner or a friend, but not the end of the world if you're walking with it under your arm and you're just walking gently next to your bike. Don't try and ride your bike with a bike box. That's for sure. And you're not allowed to. And whenever you're at the race, remember, John and his friends are watching helmets on, clipped on whenever you are on your bicycle throughout the whole event from pre to post. Okay. You come in, you rack your bike, you leave the same way out. You would have made sure that you remember where your bike is. There's no balloons or pieces of glitter tape hanging around it. It's just, just to remember where you are. If you look to the sides, You'll see a piece of fencing in line, a street light, a crack in the tar. Um, obviously, you've got to count. You remember when you've racked, you think to yourself, okay, I'm going to come swimming. Now swim in here. I'm going to bike out there. So I'm going to run in here and I'm going to go one, two, three. Here I am. Or one, two, three, four. And then you think to yourself, I'm next to the red bike or I'm next to the guy with the towel with those shoes. Orientate yourself before you leave. So when you come in with water in your brain and high revs at endorphins flying, you don't get lost and become one of those people who sprints up and down and loses two or three minutes looking for their bike. Calm down, breathe, helmet clip on properly before you get on your bike. It's another mistake. I've seen, you must see videos of that. Look at Chris McCormack in Kona five years ago. Oh no, more, flip 15 years ago. He spends a minute and a half and he's the, lead, he's the favorite for the race. He spends a minute and a half trying to do up his bike thing because he's so nervous and stressed and he just can't do up his clip on his helmet. So just breathe, take it easy. All your time is made up when you're on the course, when you've settled down and you're putting in the big watts, not over here. Okay, so you come in from the swim, you've run in here. You can pull your wetsuit down to your waist. You can't take it off unless you've taken it off in the water and you've carried it the whole way. You then come in here, goggles, cap, and wetsuit into the box. Nothing left outside the box. Again, Jono's team might be strict. They might see someone who's left the whole wetsuit lying on the ground or you know, if I think of a little leg or a piece of something sticking over the edge of the box, no one's going to lose the sleep. But if you start throwing stuff around like some of the elite athletes have done in the past, you're going to get a DQ because someone else is going to trip over your wetsuit or their bike wheel is going to get caught in your wetsuit and knock bikes off the racks. Just be, just be polite and be neat. Okay, so your box is going to be next to your bike. You're going to orientate yourself to where you are, ready to race, foot in the right gear, Spin your wheel, make sure your brake blocks aren't rubbing from your trip up to Cape, up to Mykonos. Just be sure that you, you're ready to go. Then you walk down to the, you walk. When you come out, you'll see the route down to the start is this way out. Okay, when you come back on the bike, so you've come in from the swim, you've biked out. So basically you come in this corner, you leave that corner. It means it means everybody's done the same distance regardless where your bike is. Okay, swim in, bike out. So you run in, you leave your bike, you take your bike out, you start running out. The, the refs will have a mount line there. You're not allowed to mount your bike before the mount line. You get to the mount line, and as soon as you're on the other side of the mount line, you can step your leg over your bike and start going. But before you take your bike off the rack, your helmet is secured on your head. You can't touch your bike with a helmet unstrapped. Okay. Then you bike out from over the mount line. You come out to the circle I showed you earlier, out the road to Mykonos, I'll show you a route map just now and off you go. You come back after 40 Ks if you've done this full, you've done the Olympic distance or standard, 20 Ks if you've done the sprint, you come back in here, the far corner. Okay, so you come past where your mount line, and you'll find a dismount line here. That means you only dismount on the other side of that. You then run with your bike carefully into here. You can run with your shoes on if you like, but obviously it's very dangerous because you slip and slide all over the place. Otherwise, if you know how to leave your bike shoes, in your bike, like you might have done before the race, um, then you then you could take your shoes off and carry them in your hand, uh, or leave them on your bike because you would have if you if you weren't able to decleat and uncleat with your feet on the bike, 
then your shoes would have been in your back, in your back, back, in your box. If you are able to, you can leave them clipped into your pedals. So then you Brent, Brent, if you can mute, please. Please, Brent, if you can mute your mic. Thanks. Then, um, okay, so then you, you've wrecked your bike when you've come back in. Your helmet comes off last once your bike's already wrecked. Everything's in the box. You've taken your shoes, running shoes out, your running cap, your sunnies, whatever you need for the run, Vaseline, whatever, a little munch, a uh, gel, whatever you're going to carry with you, and you run out this way, the far corner. So again, you've done the full distance. You've come in off the bike here, you've run out there, and you're onto the run course into Mykonos. Okay, any questions on the transition so far or parking? Great. Okay, timeline for the day, 5.30 to 7.15, on-site parking. We've spoken about that already. Transition will be sorry, open sorry, for... Paul. Yes. Sorry, sorry, it's just a quick one. Just back to the transition, just with regards to the um, transition boxes or park boxes or whatever. So everything is in the box. There's nothing like... On the, on the ground next to your bike. No, like. everything's in the box, correct. Okay, all right, cool. Okay, but okay. look, I mean, the club, so club, the issue is wind. Um, I know you don't have much of it up in Jersey, but down here, if the wind blows and everything's lying next to the bikes, shoes roll under bikes, things move, bottles get blown around. It's just, that's why we much prefer the, the box system. Um, so yeah, I mean, obviously, if it was a windless perfect day, it wouldn't be an issue. It'd be easier to rack it out, put it out on a towel. I think it's just much safer this way. But Bowa, go for it. Hey, excuse me. Do you have a box like a photo? What they look like? I will show you a little. Uh, I'll show you. I think we got a diagram in a moment. Uh, I'll okay. give you the, the specs. So it's forty by forty. Forty four by forty wide. Roughly, and when you go to the shop, a plastic sh a shop like that, they'll they'll usually know roughly. And we're not going to be too strict. Some people okay. have clearer clearer ones that are, are narrower or shallower. Other people have black ones that are taller. Preferably have something with a lid, because if it is raining, you want to walk there with it with a lid on it, and you have your lid on it until you start. If you want to leave it on, obviously you could come into transition and stick it under your box, but uh, you could also take it off at the last minute, just so you've got a secure box without things falling out. Um. Babawa, you can unmute and go for it. Uh, hi, Paul. Uh, it's uh, Pacific. I just wanted to find out uh, about the uh, transition. So can I uh, leave my sh my running, uh, sorry, my cycling shoes on my bike? It's okay. Do I have to take in it in your pedals, yes. In my pedals, that is okay. Sure. Everybody yeah. who's okay. able to do that, a lot of beginners aren't able to do that, so I wouldn't advise that. But any experienced athlete that knows how to jump on their bike and get into their shoes absolutely no problem okay thank you so much okay no problem uh, helmets won't be on your bike helmets will be in your box because those are also things that blow around and also get caught in the racks and get caught in the brakes so anything else if you've got a gel and you want to tape it to your top tube also not a problem because it's secure anything shoes are secure in the pedals gels are secure with tape bottles are secure in the bottle cage it's just anything loose we we don't want on the bikes Okay, so on to the timeline. Giving you the parking times. Don't try and get into Mykonos after quarter past seven. You're not going to get in, and you're going to be grumpy. Quarter to six, the standard transition opens. Quarter to seven, standard transition closes. If you're a sprint athlete, you can rack early. If you're there early and you, your mate or friend or family is doing the standard and you want to get, get going, there's no issue having your bike, but we will close it and you'll have to leave and you'll come back in again later. I'll show you in a second. The standard race will start at seven. So we will be having a, a last minute swim brief on the beach just before seven. And the first wave, the elites, the seeded wave um, will start at seven o'clock, followed by age groups. There are a couple of people who are on our list of people we would pref preferably like to seed. The problem is for the Western province event, et cetera, the people who aren't able then to see their competition so we've decided to go, apart from the top, top 25 seeds, everybody's starting in age groups. Yes, to a couple of the oldies, we know you're fast. I'm one of you, but it just makes sense to go from youngest to oldest. The fastest are probably the 35 to 40s, and they're going behind the junior, but we're going from 18 upwards. Right, standard starts at 7. Sprint transition opens at 8, after the last swimmers are out of the standard. Okay, then you can come and rack your bikes. 
Nine o'clock, the transition's closed. 10 o'clock, no, I'm sorry, 9.30, the sprint will start. So 15 minutes before, we'll have a race briefing on the beach, a last minute, and we'll get started. Prize giving at one o'clock in the restaurants, right next to the finish line. 15.30, kids splash and dash at the pool at Mykonos, as always. Any questions on the timeline? Uwai? Oh. Yes, sir. Um, Miley Paul, so yeah. just a question regarding the, um, can you hear me? Yes, Uwai, uh, I don't know if that's how we say your name. It's Uwais, but that's, that's perfectly fine. Uwais, yeah, um, go for it. So the, the parking is for, for standard and sprint from 5.30 to 7.15. Correct. Yeah, as long as you're involved in the race, you can park in one of those two. Uh, we'll fill up the first one, and as soon as we feel that it's full, someone will stop you going left, and you'll have to go straight into the other oh. one, which actually isn't a bad oh. at all. It's actually great. It's just yeah. those are the two places we've been allocated. So, for example, let's say I pitch up at 6.30 a.m., right? Um, and I'm doing the sprint. I still, well, I have to wait until 8, 8 o'clock uh, to, to um, you know, put my bike in my box and everything. No, no I was just saying a minute ago, you can rack before, but okay. it, it, you can rack if you're early, if you've got a friend, except if you're there early. But at, mm -hmm. at 7, we will, when we start, when, oh, sorry, at, um, the, from 7 till 8.00, we will from sorry quarter to seven until eight. The sprint, the whole transition will be closed because obviously then the the the, the standard people are coming through there. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Right, then, then we'll kick you out again. At, at to be honest, about quarter past nine, but we've got nine here to, to be safe because you've been there all morning and should be fine by then. Adrian Smith, yeah. okay, go for it. Well, yeah. Then just um. So if you are a, a non-competitor, is there a cost to get into Mykonos? No, sir. If you have charge, you just have to. You'll arrive with your competitor. Um, and if they're checking into accommodation or if they're coming into the resort, you can't. You just have to come in and sign as as a day visitor. Okay. So there's no cost. No. Adrian Smith. How's it, Paul? Um, any cut of times for either one of the two um, versions of the triathlon? You mean cutoff times? Yeah. No. So no, there aren't. We, uh, we've got very, very cool police services, and we have asked them to, to, to be as flexible as possible. If there's someone who literally takes, you know, rides the bike at well under 20 k's an hour and, and, and can't get back in, we might have to either give them a lift back and let them start the run, or pull them off the bike course at the last turn and at the at the drink station. But um, everyone I've spoken to, I've had some mails from people who are worried. I've asked them about their average speed to swim and bike, and they don't seem like they're going to have a problem. So no. Cool, gotcha. And then one last one is um, how do um, how do, does everybody start together, or is there kind of like groups of ten Listen. that go out, or no. how does that? So we're starting in waves. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, still, after registration, we'll go through the uh, size of the age groups, but there are some biggest age groups, 30 to 35, uh, 35 to 40 is very big. There are a couple of big age groups, and we'll start either combined or together, depending on the sizes, but um, roughly between 30 and 50 are the, are the group starts. Cool. Gotcha. Thanks so much. Okay. Pleasure. And, and remember, it's, um, yeah, it's, all, it's all based on your start time. And your chip times. So there's no benefit trying to force your way into another group. Um, so, yeah. Um, Paul, if yeah. I can add something to the timeline so that people are very well aware of it. People, in terms of the transition opening to collect your bike after the event, this will only happen once the last cyclist from the sprint event has actually entered the transition and has cleared that transition to start their run. No one from the standard will be able to collect their bike prior to that. And obviously no one from the sprint will be able to collect their bike. So we are looking at around about, if I'm looking at timings wise, about 11. We're looking at around about 11 o'clock, of course. Yeah. In fact, it should have been on there. Sorry, John, no, that was actually, I don't know why it's not in here, but I think it's about 11, but yeah, we'll, you, yeah, so you guys can call it there. 11 o'clock, 11.30, the, the transition will not open before then. Just to make sure that, A, it's safe uh, for the athletes still competing, and B, just to make it fair that you're not getting in their way while they are still competing. Thanks, Paul. Bang on. Thank you. Okay. Uh, 
Clive, you've been answered, I think. Yep. Right. So, uh, sorry, timeline rules. It's a non-drafting event, so TT bikes are allowed. That means for those who uh, don't know, that means a time trial bike. It means you can have a normal road bike with tri bars. You can even have a mountain bike with tri bars. You can have clip on bars on a mountain bike. So that means you don't sit inside of 10 meters behind the athlete in front of you. Like the Tour de France, I know there's a lot of beginners doing Blue Lagoon Triathlon. You probably don't know what we're talking about, but the difference between riding behind someone and next to someone is massive. You cannot sit in someone's slipstream because the refs on the motorbikes, et cetera, and the athlete themselves will give you a hard time, but hopefully, but it is illegal. It's cheating. So you keep a gap of 10 meters. You pass somebody wide enough. Once you've passed them, they're not allowed to accelerate and try and pass you. They've got to drop back. Then you pull in with a 10 meter gap and we basically maintain an honest race, please. Uh, you know, we're not going to be police. We're not looking to, to become like the Gestapo and have lots of people getting penalties and disqualified. We don't want that. But if you're an honest person and you've trained to be a stronger version of yourself, then who are you trying to kid? Just don't cheat. It's equivalent to taking steroids. It's just no point. Or taking a shortcut. If you really are that desperate to pretend you're someone you aren't, help yourself. But we will obviously be policing it. And anyone caught... <laughs> Will be viewed with a lot of negativity. My, my stronger self will be just to finish the race. <laughs> exactly. And we'll applaud your stronger self, Alicia. <laughs> so so only, only CTTA, which is the new version of Western Province Triathlon, members can qualify for team selection. That means selection for the Western Province team to go to SA Champs in PE in March and then to potentially go on to World Champs. So that is the deal you would have received communication from Umkhat and all the rest you guys if you didn't have a license and you haven't paid for a license and you aren't a licensed triathlete if you've got a temporary license you aren't a licensed member that means you've only got a temporary license in order to allow yourself to race on the day and get insurance cover you aren't allowed to become part of the western province team if you're worried about that mail chat Mail Cape Town Triathlon, the organization, contact us to give you contacts if you need and make sure you sign up fast because otherwise you will not be part of that prize giving. No matter how far you win by, we've had a guy last two years ago, he won the whole category and he thought he was a member and he went and got angry at prize giving and the Western Province guys pulled out his history and he wasn't a member and he was very disappointed. All he had to do was join up in advance. So just be clear on that, okay? There's two, there's two prize givings. One is the Blue Lagoon Triathlon. We, as a lifestyle race, we reward everybody overall. In other words, 18 to 39 for overall, that's seniors. Then the uh, vets are 40 to 49, masters 50 to 59, grandmasters 60 plus. You'll all have your moments in the sun. So yes, Frank and all those others listening, Peltrit and the rest, we are we are gonna um, reward you if you are in your if you when your age group or you're in the top three, but then CTTA Western Province they reward top three in each category from five years in five year um, gaps groupings. So 50 to 54, 55 to 59, 18 to 24 is the first one. The rest are all in five year categories, 70 to 75, 75, 80. All right. So you can be two prize givings. Blue Lagoon they will do the CTTA one straight after. So we'll be quick as possible. We'll try not to belabor prize giving. We always have a jewel with drinking beer and down downs and arm wrestling and lucky draws for cool weekends away and lovely Thalima wine. And two times you have got given us really cool prizes. And so have Chia Vita, our partners. So we've got some lacquer stuff, but um, we've tried not to make prize giving too long because we've got live music and lacquer food straight after your prize giving. Um, as we said, no helmet, no race. It better be working order. If you waved your helmet, it's not okay. Oh, look at it, tilt it forward, look inside it, and look for any cracks. A crack in the shell means an illegal helmet. Okay, it has to be able to be to, to be able to fit tightly on your head. Don't let the straps be all loose or broken. They need to be able to fit tightly on your head, and there's no cracks in your helmet. Okay, please, a proper cycling helmet. Okay, so. So Adele, if you can just uh, switch off your mic, unless you've Sorry. been just... Okay, then um, bring your own transition box. We spoke about those a moment ago. No helmet, no race. 
Hand in your timing chips at the finish, please. We're going to have a flag at the finish. We're going to have a person who you're going to give it to in a box. Please don't leave with your timing chip. If you get back to your room and you take off your socks to jump in the shower and you've got the thing around your ankle, please bring it back to us straight away. Please. They cost a lot. And if you don't, we're going to send you an invoice for 500 bucks. Okay. The transition boxes I'll talk about again in a second. But remember, nice, big, strong plastic box that you can use for life. Um, this is the gear list. Here it is, the 40 centimeters by 40 centimeter transition box. No straps. Straps are what causes uh, things to get hooked and fall around, etc. So it's just a nice, typical adder storage box. Sometimes it's got those little yellow clips or black clips on the side that clip open and shut. Pretty straightforward thing. They're very inexpensive. You'll need a wetsuit and goggles. You will need a wetsuit almost certainly. Anything under 15.9 degrees, 15.9 and below, it'll be wetsuit compulsory. Those people who've messaged me about surf suits, you can use them. They're horrible to swim in. They keep you warm. If you can and you can afford it, rent a triathlon wetsuit or try and get one because they're amazing. And if you look after them, they last for life. So two times you, the, the wetsuit brand will be at registration. They'll be at the race weekend. You can try one out if they've got enough sample stock or you can rent one from them. Terry and the guys will be there as well. So wetsuit and goggles, anything over 15.9, it becomes optional. And it has been. Out of five years, we've had two years well into 18. We've had 18 and 20 degrees because it's a lagoon. It's not out at sea, but it is still fresh tidal water that comes in and out every day. So it's clean, which is wonderful because um, it's fresh sea from the West Coast. But if it gets a direct swell, which it did last year, you can get waves there. I mean, everybody will remember we had proper waves there last year. And I love that. And I think all of us do triathlon in the ocean because it's amazing. So if you don't want to swim, because you're not comfortable. If you come from Joburg, you never swim in the sea and it looks scary and intimidating, you may miss the swim, go straight up to transition, inform the refs, will obviously take your number. You can then start the bike after the last swim has started and you can start the race and finish. You don't have to swim, but those who trained hard to swim and have spent a long time looking forward to ocean swims and practiced ocean swims, which are not scary, if you calm and you breathe deep and you relax and you hold the bottom of the water and you push under a wave, it's incredibly simple. Kids five years old can swim in the ocean. We don't want to be, uh, we don't want to jeopardize others because we make a call on beginner swimmers who don't want to swim in the sea. A lot of people adore the swim. That's why it's a triathlon and not a duathlon. Okay, um, it's bright swim cap. Jono, just remind me, it's pink, yellow. Just give me the colors. Green. Um, and then, um, what else do we say? Yeah, pink, yellow, green, uh, or any psychedelic colored uh, swim cap that can be seen from a mile away. Orange, for example. But uh, swim caps that are definitely out, please don't pitch up with them and spread the word. White, black, dark blue. If you pitch up with one of those, you will be sent to a shop to go and buy another swim cap on the morning. And if you can't find one, sorry, then you will not be allowed to participate. It's as simple as that. It's okay. a safety thing. So thank you. Terry and the guys at the bike shop uh, at registration and at the race will have caps, I'm sure, if you need to buy one. And I'll ask him to make sure he packs some. Um, chip safety. Uh, so we, don't, we won't be giving out swim caps. We don't have a sponsor for Blue Lagoon. Just saying, in case any rich corporates are there, my number's available. Give me a call. We'd love to have you sponsoring this race. It's a Sell out every year. It's one of the best races in the calendar. We'd love to have a brand involved, but no caps this year. Chip safety, uh, use the pin, use a pin, a safety pin, or tape, duct tape, or not duct tape, because it's a bit hectic. It'll pull out your head, legs, hairs, and your skin, maybe. Just electrical tape. But it's a very good idea that once you've got your chip, and we don't have chip, uh, you don't, your timing chip will come without a strap. You either bring your own strap. A lot of people have bought their own straps and have them for life. Um, I know Iron Man has had, there's been thousands. People have, most people have got a timing chip strap. If you don't have one, you can buy one at registration. It's basically a Velcro strap about that long that goes through your timing chip and wraps around your ankle. You can then um, stick some tape around it or stick a safety pin through it to make sure it doesn't come off because they do come off every year after the swim, a couple wash up onto the beach. So if you don't have it on, you won't get a time, you won't get a finish. It's your responsibility to make sure it stays secure. And a good idea to wet it first so that if it's got any stretch in it, that's already gone. But don't make it so tight your leg can't breathe. And also, don't put it in a place where it rubs you during the run because it'll, it'll make you bleed. 
Um, TT bike, a race belt, sorry, is the next thing. Uh, for those who don't know what a race belt is, triathlon has race belts, which are elastic straps with a clip, usually with a clip, has two little dongles hanging from it where holes are this far apart. That goes through the top two holes in your race number and then is secured through it with little toggles. It's a very good idea. I would insist that you put a safety pin in between the two so that if for some reason those toggles uh, pull off or the, or the race number tears on, this, on those, at least if you put it on too tight, the, the, um, the little uh, safety pin will hold it there. Um, quite a good idea to give it a light little, little wrinkle in your hands before you stop because then it doesn't flap so much in the wind. But don't scrunch it up and no cutting. You can't cut it down to a small size and make an error or tuck it in. It has to be visible. It has to be full size. Okay. Um, race belts, I've given you. You can buy race belts at, at the registration if you don't own one. Again, like a wetsuit, like a timing chip strap, they last for life. You don't need another one. They should last a long time unless you lose a lot of weight or gain a lot of weight. Uh, TT bikes and bars, um, I've mentioned already. Clip-on tri bars, TT bikes, but the refs will give them a wiggle. They do need to have um, um, closed ends. You can't have a big gaping hole at the end because if you do crash and that goes into somebody, they're going to make a huge big hole in them. So they need to have the little bar ends in them. Or um, yeah, you, there's lots of ways to do that. You can actually stick a plastic kind of cork in there and then tape it up. But it has to be, the, the, the refs are going to have to be happy that it's safe. So please don't arrive with open bar ends um, and make sure that they're nice and tight. I've seen a lot of people arrive they feel like they're tight because they tightened them with a, an Allen key, but then during the race, they realize that they wiggle loose and it's a horrible feeling. I've even seen pros do that at Ironman. Just make sure they are super tight. Practice riding with your bars on because you've just traveled from Joburg or Durban, wherever you come from, or even from Cape Town. If they're a bit loose, they're horrible. They'll come loose and they'll dangle down. They can make you crash in the race. Make them nice and tight. Don't over tighten them if it's carbon because you'll crack the carbon handlebars. Then you must use a torque wrench. Okay, so cycling shoes. If you don't own cycling shoes, you're welcome to ride in running shoes. Uh, and then in terms of running shoes, we suggest road shoes. There is about 200 meters of trail, uh, actually two pieces, so maybe two, 300 meters in total per lap, uh, but it's easy, um, non-technical sand road. So road running shoes are best. There's a lot of hard surface throughout the race and obviously a helmet. Race pack at Mykonos, is the only place you're going to get a timing chip, okay? Otherwise, you'll have your race number, your bike sticker. Okay, what is a bike sticker? It's a long sticker that looks like, here's one. I've got a sample still from Cape Town Tri. Okay, it's got the number on the end. You take the piece off the back. If this is your, if this is your um, seat post, you wrap it around your seat post and stick it together on the back so that your race number is clearly visible off the back of the bike. Aim them so they're nice and stuck together. They'll sit like this around your seat post. Okay, there's a diagram. Yeah. Sorry that I'm interrupting there. Athletes, are, are two things with regards to those numbers that Paul's just gone and shown you. Uh, one, please don't put them on the bike until you actually get to the venue. I've seen too many athletes go and put them on before uh, at home. And by the time they get halfway to Mykonos, the actual number is missing because it's flapped right off and torn. I doubt Paul is going to have spare uh no, the, one each the yeah, ability exactly. to go and uh, give you a second number like iron man or anything like that two when you attach the number please don't attach it anywhere near the wheel i've seen athletes go and attach it to the wheel the next thing it's broken off and got caught in the rear derailleur or uh, to other gears and the next thing it's gone and caused an absolute huge mechanical it must be as Paul has shown in the diagram, somewhere along that seat post or along, if you've got an aero bike, the actual section directly below the, uh, the seat post uh, on the actual frame. But it must never, ever be anywhere uh, near the wheel along the stays or anything like that, please. Thanks, Paul. Cool. Good idea. Great. Good point. Very good. Um, then, your, then you get a second sticker, which will go onto your... Bike box, okay, not on the front of your helmet. There's no there's no numbers on the helmets, guys. We won't have like the August where we have uh, people taking photographs where they check your number. We will have photographers. I'll talk about that in a moment. But um, your second sticker goes on your bike box. And we do, we do like you to um, identify your bag. If you get to drop a bag off, 
Your bag drop is down at the Athene Conference Center, which is where you fetch your timing chip before the start. I'll mention that in a second. So, so you've got your box sticker. You've got a bike sticker there. Your race number, I mentioned a second ago. Again, just an example from Cape Town Try. Your name will be on it. Your race number will be on it. There'll be a medal in the corner if you ordered a medal, okay? I know that five out of six athletes throw medals in the dustbin. Unless it's Ironman or Comrades or something very, very important in their lives, all we do is we see a huge amount of metal and ribbons in bins and in hotel rooms, etc. We don't want to do that anymore. So what we've done now is we reduced the cost of the medal and we basically allowed it as a temporary, as a, as a, as a one-off purchase. So just give me a second, Andrew. Here is an example of a race medal, which are very nice. We've got CTTA on the back and Blue Lagoon on the front. They're lovely. You order them in advance. If your race number has a, a, a medal on it, printed on it, that means you ordered one. And when you finish the race, when you're given your timing chip, there will also be someone who sees your medal and says, there you go. Congratulations for finishing. Okay. So that I've mentioned. I've got two people, Andrew Cronier and Uai again. Cool, Paulie. So just a quick one. Um, when you enter into the transition, obviously, are we allowed to bring a transition bag with everything in it and then have the box empty and then we empty the bag into the transition yeah. box? Okay, that's cool, right? Because I know some of them didn't allow us to bring a bag in. So I just want yeah, to you know, the, the reason why is because there's always an idiot or five who brings a bag in and says, no, I'm not going to leave it here and then they leave it there. Okay, so we will be allowed to bring a bag. Yeah, yeah. Bring in whatever you like. You can come dressed in a in your skin suit. I mean, in your yeah, and Nicole will want me in a tutu, but that's fine. That's a different you and you go and put in your bag down at the uh, down at the at the bag drop. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Cool. Pleasure. Uh, the other gent, uh, I've already forgotten hey, how to say Paul. the name. You are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, that's that, that's fine. Um, well, in the event that you don't have a the belt uh, to hold your number on? Is it fine if you just uh, pin it to your back? Um, no, obviously? because i tell you why. I, I forgot to mention, I'm glad you asked. The, the race belt is reversible. So because it's not attached to you, it's strapped around your waist. When you're on the bike, it's showing backwards from your bum backwards because the refs can only see you bent over your handlebars and they can only see it on your bum. And they need it. If they're going to disqualify you or report you or communicate with you, they need your race number. Then when you come into transition, you turn it around, so you swivel the elastic around you so that the race number is on the front, so everybody seeing you front on can see your race number. So I recommend simply, I, I don't know how much they cost, but I'm pretty sure they're not more than 100 Rand. Get one once at race briefing or go to a try shop or go and get one whenever you like, um, but bring one. They are very good. Using it just a normal elastic is dangerous because they often blow off you and they break off. But don't we don't have two numbers, so they don't pin it to your race vest. If you're a okay. if, if, sorry, except if you're a team runner or a team cyclist, then you will get two numbers. And the swimmer obviously doesn't have one because they won't be swimming with a number on. But the biker and runner can uh, attach them to their outfit if they prefer. The cyclist will be on the back of the shirt. The runner will be on the front. Uh, but okay, Bowen, understood. Uh, Babawa? Yeah, hi Paul. I just want to find out uh, about uh, the race number. And like uh, for, 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 for cycling, so you wear it when you're doing your, your, uh, your, your first transition. Yes, you don't wear it in the swim. Nobody, I'm so glad you mentioned this. Yeah. You may not wear them on the swim because mm -hmm. if they're under your wetsuit, they get wet, they get torn. The pressure under your wetsuit is radical. You can't keep it mm. still. And it's mm. a very good chance you'll start the bike with a wet torn number. So mm. it, it's left in your bike box, ready to go. When you arrive and you put on your cycling shoes or your helmet, etc. either step into it and put it around your waist or clip it around your waist. You may not wear it before and you must wear it on the bike and the run. And then the, the one that you, we're going to put in the bike, it must be in the bike before you start the race. You mean the, the shoes? No, no. Uh, another uh, race number that you put in the bike. Yes, it must be on you before you start, before you before get on your start, bike. Yeah. Okay. Helmet on, race number around your waist, off you go. You don't carry it in your hand. No, because that okay. can cause an accident. 
Okay, cool. I'm just going to quickly answer the questions on the chat because I think I've left it. Pleasure. I've just left the chat. Is there a practice swim on Friday? Yes. We do have a we do have cans in the water. So it's not a it's not a a um it's water supported swim. We will have if there's no wind, we'll put the cans out in the key spots on Friday afternoon so that you can swim. It is a public resort. People swim on the beach all the time. You're welcome to go and have a swim. I'll show you the swim maps in a moment. So yes, you can swim Friday afternoon and hopefully we'll have cans in place. Um, is there a bike transfer from Cape Town? Not with us, but there are quite a few bike transfer companies um, in South Africa. If you Google them, there are a number of them. We haven't, we haven't given anybody the official rights to do that, but there are lots of them in South Africa that you can jump on and some are better known than others. If you're struggling to find one, send us a message at blue lagoon try at electricinc.co.za and we'll put one of them in touch with you. Uh, the practice swim, it isn't a time. It's any time from when you're there before dark. Um, you're welcome to go and have a good feel. And I recommend it. It's a really good thing to do. Um, so do you provide the box? No, you bring your own box. We've been through that, Sasha. Um, do males and females start in the same batch? Yes, in numbers. All right. It's, it's age-based. We'll be doing the batches in ages. So there's no separate female and male. There's elites and then age groups. Um, what time does the relay start? Same as everybody else. You, you start, your swimmer starts with the other swimmers, and then you hand over to the biker. We'll talk about that in a moment in transition, but you hand over to your biker or your runner on the outside of transition. When, you, when the swimmer arrives at transition, they hand over the timing chip, and the biker then runs to their bike and leaves that way. And same thing when the biker comes in, they meet the runner, they give them the chip, and then they go out that side. They, sorry, that, sorry, the biker goes into transition, racks their bike, and then takes the chip to the exit point of the run and hands over the chip. So at all you run, it's concurrent racing. It's not, there's not a separate relay start. Some teams are teams of two, some are teams of three. Obviously, then that doesn't affect them. Um, they obviously just continue on their own, but they'll hand over. So twos and threes, you're all competing with each other. That's not for Western Province anyway. Um, is there a bike transfer we've covered? Is there a practice one we've covered? I will need to get in the water to acclimatize before. Yes, we allow a warm up. Good question, Susan. We definitely allow a warm up. I can't bear getting to races. I won't mention the names, but where they don't allow you a swim warm up. I don't understand it. They've got race, they've got more water safety on the water than they ever have the whole year round. And yet we all have to find some way to warm up in the dry out space. Then we dive in the water all hot and we get freezing or cold and dark and disorientated. I would definitely recommend you swim before we start. I'll show you on the map just now. There's a warm-up area. You'll be given time to warm up. We'll call you out of the water probably five to ten minutes before the start. Um, probably ten, knowing Jono. Um, so we we'll just and that's not a criticism, but it's a good a good idea. Um, but yeah, good idea. You get I'll talk later, but you need to get some water through your wetsuit. You need to get water probably just to rinse out your mouth, get a sense of the temperature. You need to open up your shoulders, you need to get your heart rate up. You can't start a race with a low heart rate. Um, you've got to start with a high heart rate on the swim. Then you get onto the beach, you bring your heart rate down, and now you've got an elasticated heart, elasticized heart muscle, and you're going to be much better off. You're also going to have a wetsuit that fits you better because when waters run through a wetsuit, you can pull it into your groin and under your arms much easier than when it's dry. So I definitely recommend a acclimatization warm-up swim before the race starts. So that answers you, Susan. Um, Rwanda Downing. Has everyone received their race numbers yet? They are on the website. They are on the link that was on social media and they are on finish time. So if you need it, go to finishtime.co.za, click on Blue Lagoon Try and the start list is there. Finish time, finish time, one word. Okay, they're online. And is it too late to order a medal asking for a friend? It is, but we did make a couple of extras. So if I were you, I would go straight to Matt, Matt Lombardi, the ex-Springbok mountain biker who works for us. He, Springbok, I'm South African. He is at registration. We probably have a couple. You need to come and ask if we can be added to that and we might have to just uh, make a plan for you. But no, we've been telling people for a long time and it's on the entry system. The medal, choose a medal or not. SMS was sent to me for race number and assumed for all. Thanks, Andrew. Yes, an SMS should have gone out. It's on the website. It's on finish time. Right. Sorry, guys. Just had to answer those questions. We'll go back to those in a moment. Um, 
Let's get on to the route maps. Right, so you've now, oh, sorry, Baboa, what's happening? Uh, thank you, Paul. Just I wanted to find out about uh, the relay uh, team. So the relay team, uh, when you're rewarding them, it's going to be the same reward for someone who's, uh, who, who, who's going to race alone. No, nobody so, alone. Relay teams are, are solo, solo athletes. Relay teams are either two or three people. Oh, okay. But uh, when it comes like at the uh, price, uh, for example, you know, we not doing the solo or relays, so it's gonna be. No, we'll have a separate relay. Relay, okay. relay teams will be will be will be brought up, but that's oh, okay. There's no age group involved in that, and there's oh, no male okay. and female. It's mixed and solo. Yeah, that's okay. okay. Cool. Sorry, Thanks. we need to just we need a pleasure. Um, so when you leave transition, okay, you've now racked your bike, and you are now keen to head down to the swim start or to go and fetch your chip. There are two routes to the to the start. This is one the same way you came. There's the big parking field. There's the circle where you came into Mykonos. You either park there or you came down the back and you park there. Okay. When you are finished racking your bike and you've got your, you know where your bike is, everything's sorted, bike is ready to go. You walk down here in your wetsuit or carrying a wetsuit or goggles, all your swim stuff, a bag, if you're going to do a bag drop. You then walk down past the casino and down this road and you can come down the walkway where the fans normally stand onto the beach, or you go straight on to collect your chip on Saturday morning, you come back, and then you go to the start. Otherwise, you can walk down. And usually, if you're, if you're, it's, they will usually stop people who aren't staying overnight. There are security. But if you are spending the weekend at Mykonos, you'll have a band around your wrist that shows a, um, that you're staying in the resort. We will ask them to allow athletes that are identifiable with a race number to let you through. It doesn't make a huge difference, as you can see, but this is quite a convenient, quite a nice way to walk, is down through the parking of the tennis parking, down through the gap, through the Calivas, down to the, past the pool, onto the beach. So there are two ways to walk to the start. If you want to still get your timing chip, you just go straight through onto the road, and here's the Athene Conference Center. This is where registration happens. This is where the finish area is. This is where the restaurants are for prize giving. Mykonos Central is all here. There's the beach where we're starting. Here's the beach where you're finishing your swim and starting the long swim on Sunday for the 800 meter swimmers. So you walk all the way down here. This is where you're going to start. Here's the word warm up. Here's your warm up area. You don't go through the finish line and set off your timer. You come down the left near the swimming pool, near the splash and dash course area. You come down here have a lacquer swim, come back up here and get ready to be called down into the starting pens. I hope that's clear. All right. Babawa, if you can put your hand down, unless you've got another question. Thanks. Okay, so that's the start procedure. Swim course for the standard distance, 1,500 meters. Starting on that beach, a dry start, you run into the beach. These waves are almost exactly what it looked like last year. There are waves. If, if the swell is coming directly in from the West Coast through the heads, which are roughly in that line, like the Nasna heads pretty much, it'll come straight through. Otherwise, it's generally quite gentle. Okay? You come out through the surf, avoiding this little rocky outcrop. You'll see a turn can right in front of you. We'll be standing here. I'll be on the beach starting you off over the mic. You'll swim straight out to a can. You'll right shoulder that can. You'll swim into the, into the marina, obviously keeping wide berth of the pier. Your fans can stand here. Really cool place to watch the swim for spectators and friends along here. It looks like a Kona pier. We used to finish on this pier, but it just got a bit wind affected. So you come swimming in here. For those who remember last year, um, the front five people came in here and did the, had listened to the briefing. Then a bunch, a big group totally didn't see that or say they didn't see it. So I'm straight past it and then cut the course short. So this year we've just avoided that whole thing. We've removed this whole piece, even though it was really nice for spectators. You swam in, you now swim straight past the first row of yachts into the yacht basin. There'll be a can on the outside of it down. Over here, you swim under a catamaran. So you swim through the hull of a catamaran. If you're claustrophobic, you can swim around the catamaran, but it's pretty cool. It's like a big blue space. It's like being in a fishbowl. You swim under the catamaran. These are the restaurants right here. They'll, you'll have your fans sitting watching. 
This is where the Kalkat Mal happens on Saturday night, for those who know what that is. You swim under the yacht through the hull. The, it's a double hull cat, a massive one owned by Mykonos. You swim under there, around the buoy. So you right, you 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 left, you, you swim under the uh, yacht uh, cat, and then you left shoulder this buoy. So when you're coming down between the yachts, it's obviously going to take you longer to swim down that side. So just stay on the yacht line. Just be careful of staying too close to the yacht line because some yachts have got a little engine sticking out or a little lip underneath the surface. Just keep your distance, but it's a very wide berth. Just stick right on the way down and right on the way back up. Okay. On the way back up, you swim straight towards the harbor wall. You're going to be running along this two or four times later in the day. You swim straight towards the harbor wall. You uh, left shoulder this can. And when you left shoulder this can and start swimming out, you're going to see the turn can in the distance. You're going to swim out the mouth. This is very calm, gentle, like typical yacht club water, also sea water. You swim out. You left shoulder this can. Last year, we had a can here. And it caused some people to swim very close to these calivas, which are amazing calivas on the water, but there's rocks there. So this year, we've removed that, lengthened that, and got you to turn so that you come straight into the beach. Nice body surfing for the people who grew up at the, at the beach. as your opportunity to show off. Life savers. Then up the beach, up the left-hand side, and into transition up here. Okay. All clear? Any questions on the, on the long swim? No. Right. Oh, one, that long, that, that last part that goes to the long can, what's the estimated distance? Uh, is it like 650? It should be about 650. I think 650. If you're an engineer, this is to scale. Um, <laughs> I can, I've got to ask you to work it out. I don't know. Oh. I haven't actually, I haven't swam this course. I swam the old course many, many times, but this is a change we made for this year. So I'm actually not sure. I don't worry. It's all good. As long okay. as we can see it, we can swim it. Okay, more. We'll probably have a site over here anyway. Um, the next one is uh, the bike course. Obviously, it looks a bit gnarly, but it's pretty much pan flat. You come out of transition. You, you go up to the road. Be careful. Obviously, we can say we're going to have police. We've got police. We've got motorbikes. We've got marshals. We've spent a fortune. This race is expensive to put on because there's so many staff. Unlike certain brands, we don't have volunteers pouring out of the woodworks to come and do it for free. We pay our marshals. We have some volunteers from schools, which we, we love, and we're going to respect them and, and thank them. But it's it's with all the traffic support, which we pay for, and the car, motorbikes we pay for, et cetera, it's a lot there, but it still remains the athlete's job to keep a lookout for cars. If you go past a turnoff, there are a few turnoffs on the way up to the main road. This section here is about a 2K stretch. You're going to go through a four-way stop next to the mall, which is pretty major. You're also going to go past a couple of small, small urban home exit points. We're going to have marshals there with red flags, but you never know. The guy could have taken a phone call from his chick or scratching his bum and didn't look up and not see you in a car. And so just be aware. Come around there onto the circle. The second, the second one, once you've gone, it's slightly uphill. It's a really nice smooth tar. When you get to the second four-way stop, you're going to turn left. Don't turn left here into the mall because you're going to be very disappointed. You're going to go straight across the four-way stop up to the top, then onto the course. It's going to follow the road to Soldana. When you get to a turn here, there's one turn slightly left heading to Soldana. There's another one slightly right, and there's a straight. Five or so athletes claimed that last year, and you might be right, that a policeman told them to go straight here, and they went into like an industrial park. Three people, or actually a few more, followed Donovan Geldnes from Durban, and he was right up front, and everybody knows he's a biking god, so they all followed him, and he went off to Saldana, and they caught them 30 k's later. The guys who knew, like Matt and Brad and Vicky, and all the people who've done this race before and watched race briefing, all did what they were supposed to, turned right, followed the route up, turned around point, followed, this is a drink station, by the way, uh, followed the route back and back home. It's a simple dog leg. It's a big L. Okay, that's it. Turn around point. There's a very big tall beacon on the road, a big traffic cone, a massive traffic cone. You come back here. It's roughly 10 Ks, 10 Ks, 10 Ks, 10 Ks. You come back into town. Be careful. Keep your eyes open coming back, of course, for athletes and um, uh, pedestrians. Uh, you'll see that we've got a whole channel to ourselves. One side of the road is ours. 
So it's left and left. You stay to the, you stay on the left hand side of the left hand side. It's going to be one side of the road. If like two years ago, the traffic guys decide there are trucks that are doing, because there's quite a few sort of buildings, not building sites, excavation sites. If they're worried about the trucks coming on, they might put us to one side or split us on two sides of the highway. It's a big road with double lanes on both sides. If not a highway, but it's a big, big road. If they do that, you'll see clearly from the police and the markings, we're going to have small orange arrows on the ground as well to avoid any kids who tamper with signs and steal the poles. We're going to have orange temporary uh, marking on the ground. So look out for that as well this year. It's unusual. We haven't used that before. So you're going to follow the way out. There's a drink station here with Coke and uh, Coke and water. You're going to go up to which, but you should have a bottle on your bike. You shouldn't need this drink station. If you start the race with a bottle on your bike, should be more than enough for 40Ks. But however, we have got it there for a reason. The Rawson team will be there. They are available for drinks. Stop with pleasure. Have a chin wag, say how's it, and keep going. But that's the halfway point. So don't turn left to Soldana. Go out onto the main road, past Caro School over here, one of our partner schools. Get to the drink station. Take a turn right. Turn around point. Back, left, back to Mykonos, into Mykonos. Bike down. Okay. The run, this is still on the standard distance. I haven't done the sprint maps. You've back into transition on the top side. You got off at the bike dismount line. You ran into transition. You wrecked your bike. You took your helmet off. You took put your cycling shoes back in the box if they went on your bike. You put on your cap, your tackies. You put your other stuff, your helmet, etc., back in the box. And you run out along here. It'll take you past the casino the way you walked into transition in the morning. Then you're into the Mykonos Loop. You run up the hill. This is all uphill. I'm just telling you now, for those who aren't used to it. It's, you could do it on Friday afternoon. I would recommend you do it. You should. The markings will be up on Friday already. Or even just go for a walk. It's 2.7 Ks. So do it as a Friday afternoon walk. It's beautiful. It's a lovely walk, especially this area around here. And especially if you decide not to do the walk. If you want to go for a run or walk, this is a very beautiful trail. We were going to have the race there once upon a time, but then everyone said, no, I'm too much of a trail runner. It's too hard, but it's a beautiful stroll for families and friends. So look there, go and have a look there. It's on the run route. You just carry on down the hill and take a look there. But here's the run route. Nice, big, solid brick path pathway. It's uphill from about there next to the boatyard all the way up. This piece here is steep, proper steep. Some people walk up it. Others take short strides and use their arms more. The windmill is up here, the famous windmill. You then start leveling out along the top. You start dropping onto the sand road over here, which is downhill and fairly steep. And the drink station is over here. Okay. Coke and water. You're then going to be careful down the hill because it's quite steep. Two people fell last year and grazed themselves. Run gently down here. But obviously, easy up, harder down tends to help. Don't fly up this little hill here because you will end up with freewheeling and recovering here when everyone else is going fast. Then you go down the hill. You take a steep little right. This is also quite steep, this little one downhill. Onto the pier, you go all the way to the end of the pier around the little lighthouse and back. Be careful, there's a pipe here that is permanent. It's a it's a drainage dredging pipe. It's permanent. Jump over it. If you've tired, it's you can't miss it. It's like a massive boa constrictor. It's a huge thing. You can't miss it, but just keep an eye. You keep right, you turn the, you turn around the, the um the lighthouse, you stay right. Just like Iron Man East London used to be. Then you turn right here, you don't go back up the hill. You go along the water's edge, um, around the pathway, then around the back of those fancy calivas. If you're staying there, I would hope you're staying here. They're very nice. Around the back of the restaurants. We used to go through the restaurants, but it also got too congested. Around the back of the restaurants. When you're here, we're going to have a big sign saying, two laps right if you're doing the sprint, four laps right if you're doing the standard. I'm a sh Even though you'll be tired, I'm sure you can count to two or four. Please count your own laps. No one's counting them for you. If you want, take four elastic bands and put them on your left hand. And then each time you pass it, stick one on your right hand if you need to count like that. But just make sure you've done four laps. On the last one, you turn right, past the putt-putt course, which is here, down through the restaurants and the shop, down onto the finish straight. And that's you done. Then when you're finished, you hand in your timing chip, you pick up your medal, you go through here, have whatever we've got for you there. There's an EPT massage station from Deep Heat. You can have 15 minutes of free massage. Uh, if you're not, if they haven't got space, they'll put your name down and they'll give you a booking. 
You can then go back to your room for a shower or back to your hotel or come into the restaurants here, eat and drink, be merry, then come back for your massage later if you like. Or you can book a longer one if they've got a slot for you. Right. The Athene Conference Center is here where you're going to be registering on Friday afternoon. It's also where you're going to walk down if you didn't get your chip before on Saturday morning. It's where you're going to walk down to get your chip before you come back to start the race, your timing chip. All right, four laps, finish over here. Game, set, match. Timing chip hand back in. Then you take a slow cruise. After 11, as Jono said, back to Transition to check out your bike. Okay, after 2.30, there won't be a single person at Transition. We're going to lock away the bikes, and then it becomes a, a Sunday bike fetch. So you've got between 11 and 2.30 to fetch your bikes. There's no security after 2. Okay. Um, next one, swim uh, sprint. Let's start with the swim. You're not going into the marina. You're going to go straight out to the same boy that everybody else uh, right shouldered, but you're going to left shoulder it. You're then going to go across to the same boy that you saw them swimming to. And you're going to, uh, Andrew, that means you're going to have a sight of marker there. You're then going to come left here and straight into the beach. So that's 750 meters through the surf, across the back of the surf, and back in with the surf. If we have terrible weather for any reason, we've got a northwester blowing, which means it's not going to be hot. It's not going to be a strong southeaster, which is great. It means it might be cool. It might be a bit foggy and a bit overcast. Not ideal for the photographers, but nice and cool for you guys. And it gets hot. Longer barn in February is hot. So we're in for a cool morning, and we know we're not going to be in for a blown-out non-swim. Um, if we have a, for any reason, we can't get craft on the water, we need to have an option B swim. It'll be in the marina all around here. You'll then have a very long run to transition like that. But that'll all be plan B, which looking at the weather now, we haven't, we're not going to even talk about. The bike is one lap, same as the same as the full, but it's half the distance. You bike out to the drink station, turn around, and you bike back. Okay, one lap, 10Ks out, 10Ks back. And as I said, it's pretty much flat. It's, uh, it's usually into the wind. And if it's northwester, it's going to be into the wind. And then it's with the wind coming back. Okay. It used to be southeaster. It's normally the southeaster. Hopefully those cycling up to Mykonos on Friday will get a southeaster. But uh, we've got a northwester, so it's going to blow you home. So get aero tight on the way there. Then the way back, make your shoulders nice and big and fly. Turn those disc wheels or those deep section wheels you've got. The run, exactly the same, except it's two laps. After two laps, turn in here. Please don't be all those people who started shouting at our refs up here and our marshals saying nobody told them to turn. No one's going to tell you to turn. There's a sign there. Go and look for it. It's next to the putt-putt course. When you walk the course on Friday night or Saturday morning super early, whatever you're going to do, look there. And you're going to see there's a turning point down to the finish. Okay. It's not 2.25 Ks. So it's not 2.5 Ks. So it's not exactly 10 K run. It's a 5.4 run or a 10.8 K run. Please remember that. If you're watching your GPS, don't think you've got 100 meters to go at 9.9. .9, you've got 900 meters to go. Thank you to Coke and Bonacqua, the guys at Peninsula Beverages, been with us from day one in 2009. Really appreciate them. Quick Space, our container guys, amazing guys. The team there are the most lovely, lovely guys. Then um, Sunday Swims, for those of you who've pre-registered and entered both, and anybody who decides they want to enter on Sunday morning, Registration is from 7 to 8 in the Athene Conference Center. 7.45 and 8.15, two different buses leave. People who go in the 7.45 bus have more time. Oh, sorry, those who want to not, don't want to listen to this, thank you very much for seeing your registration. Just as long as possible until, until you get started. Paul, well, before you go on to Sunday Swim, can I just mention a couple of things just to make life a little bit easier for athletes before sure. they sign off, please? Yes, and I'm also going to talk to the chats. I see there's a couple of questions on the chats. Okay. Guys, um, to make life a lot easier and to make it a lot quicker, because there are quite a few athletes obviously taking part this weekend, there are a couple of things um, I need you to be aware of. One, when you get to the transition, please make sure that your helmet is clipped on your head, that your swim cap is in your hand or on the top of your box, readily visible, and please double check your bikes to make sure that the, the bar end plugs on the tri bars or on the normal road handlebars are in. Um, it just makes it checking the bike and checking your helmet and getting you into transition a hell of a lot quicker. 
Um, so you can just uh, remember that. Um, two, yes, we will talk about the swim temperatures and that water temperature will be announced by 6.30, so half an hour before the first um, race starts, if by some freak chance of the imagination that it is a non-wetsuit swim, those athletes who think that they can swim in a swim skin and take it off, unfortunately, that rule has changed. So if you start with a swim skin, you finish with the swim skin. You may not take it off in the transition. Um, on that note as well, if it's a non-wetsuit swim, compression sleeves over your calves will also be illegal. So you will have to swim without them and put them on in the actual transition area itself. Um, the drafting, if you are caught and it's a 10, uh, 10 meter rule, all right, it is a two minute penalty and your name and number will be sent to the, the technical officials in the transition. You will have to report to their, uh, that person at the dismount line and serve your penalty there. Um, remember that you've got 25 seconds to pass another athlete. If you say, I, I couldn't get because uh, they were pedaling too fast, that means that you are either drafting or you are blocking and you will be given a penalty. Um, a photo will also be taken of you to ensure that, yes, were you given a penalty? You most definitely have, so that we have the actual evidence that you were spoken to. Um, try suits. Because this is a standard distance, the standard distance rules apply. That means the zip on your try suit may not be unzipped. It has to stay up the entire time. Um, uh, yes, while I know it's a fun event as well, all right, this is also uh, the regional championships, but because it's a standard distance, those are the rules, and we will be enforcing those, especially some of the elites who uh, last year tried to get away with it. If you finish your race or if you are caught with it, you will be stopped to redo it. If you finish the race with a tri suit that is unzipped, you will be disqualified. That is the rule. All right, so please be aware of that. Um, if anyone wants to appeal, and this is the last uh, point that I have before Paul carries on. If you want to appeal, the procedure is very simple. As soon as you cross the finish line, you notify the race referee. You then have 15 minutes from that notification period to hand in a written appeal to that race referee with a 500 Rand cash fee. Your, there will be a hearing. And if you win your appeal, the 500 Rand will be returned to you. If you lose your appeal, you lose your 500 Rand as well. And that is pretty uh, much uh, from my side, Paul. Thanks, Thanks very much. Thanks, Jono. That's very, very good. Sorry, I should have actually given you an intro for that. That's great. Perfect. Jono. Yes, so, sorry, Mark. Just a quick one, if I could just get back to the comments. Is there lots of seaweed underneath? The water's a bit scary. No, there isn't seaweed. But the water is usually a cloudy sort of oxygenated. Sorry, Clav? Yeah, sorry, Paul. I wanted to ask Jono, um, with regards to the, the tri suits, I know like normally with Olympic distance triathlon, you wear like sleeveless tri suits. What's the, what's the status with regards to tri suits that have sleeves and branding and that kind of stuff. I mean, is it, the, what is the status on that? Clive, look, it, it is a hard a, one. It, it is a hard one, primarily because of some of the clubs and the training squads now having sleeved, which is, uh, short sleeves that is, which is allowed for 70.3 and Ironman races. Um, we are not going to enforce that people, you know, not wear a tri suit that's got short sleeves. That's fine by us at this stage of the game. Um, and obviously, yes, there will be logos all over it. But as this is a local race, local rules, you know, apply. So we will allow it. It's only if we go on to 
Africa Cup races or uh, SA Champs, stuff like that, where, you know, yes, the rules are a lot, you know, go to the next level with regards to those tri suits. I hope that answers your question, Clark. Yeah, thanks, John. Yeah, in fact, there's been some, I see it slowly going through a shift. Quite a few races are now allowing both while the transition is made to, to sleeve sets. So is there seaweed underneath? No, uh, it's, there isn't because it's, 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 sea, it's sand. It's, it's a proper sandy beach. Um, it's a, it's, it actually is a calm lagoon. It's a safe lagoon. It doesn't make it feel like you're out at sea. So don't stress, Cecilia. I think you probably quite enjoy it. Try and get out there on Friday afternoon and have a look. Dirk, what's the surface like? It's actually largely smooth with some bumpy sections. So I'm going to give it about a five out of 10. It's not beautiful and smooth like the new road, like which parts of the road when you're on it, you're going to feel like you're on, on butter. It's like perfectly smooth. Other parts are a bit typically old West Coast, a bit bumpy. So you don't need particularly hard tires. I'd go with sort of seven out of 10 in terms of hardness. Five out of 10 for, for perfection versus a bit bumpy. So they're not brilliant, but they're not bad. There's much worse in the country. They're not like PE with spray and chip or Chapman's Peak where you're bouncing around all over the place. Um, Celia, what's the best time to put on your wetsuit as you come in or just before the warm-up? I would say on a cool day like this, it's fine to put it on wherever you're comfortable where you don't tear it. So put it on at your car or at Transition or in your hotel room and just keep it up to your waist and then only pull it up just before the start. You don't want to be walking around in a hot wetsuit for long because it can dehydrate and get hot. But um, it will be quite a cool day. I would suggest you put it on 15 minutes before the race start. You'd zip it up to the top so you can get really comfortable in it to make sure you flush it with water. Thank you. Looking forward. Great, great. The recording will be on our website from tomorrow, the recording of this. For, so please share it. Why? Share it with friends and family. Drafting distance, 10 meters. If you swim in jammers, can you put on a transition or underneath your wetsuit before the swim? Jono? Uh, sorry, uh, what, uh, I didn't hear that. Say again, Paul. If, if, if you swim in jammers, can you put on a shirt to transition or underneath your wetsuit before the swim? Yeah, as long as they're not taking the jammers off. It's a case of if you swim in jammers, you're, you're racing in jammers. Too bad, so sad. Remember, so that is the rule, guys. Um, Everyone else, yes, you can wear your racing kit under your, under your wetsuit. Yeah which is advisable because it's very hard to get into wet clothing, but don't, um, don't wear your race number. You're not allowed to wear your race number on the swim. Can I get a seat seating for the top 20 you spoke about? I don't know who you are. Samsung SMA336E, SS, whoever you are, send me a WhatsApp on the WhatsApp group. Send me a direct message and I will look at it for sure. We want to be fair to everyone. Unless you're an old school set of tires. <laughs> oh, good point. Okay, so back to the Sunday swims. Register from 7 to 8 to the Theme Conference Center. 7.45 and 8.15, the shuttles will depart to the Strunt Looper. If you're not going with your mom and dad or friends or wife or whatever, you're obviously welcome to. I wouldn't recommend that the 800-meter people necessarily go there because it's going to be quite a long time to start, but it is lekker. Strunt Looper is amazing. You get coffee and rusks. You get music. It's a beautiful site. We're going to have photographers. We're going to have race briefing. We're going to put race numbers on hands, etc. That's lekker there. So if you get there earlier in this bus, bus, it's a lot more calm than taking the 815 bus, but you're welcome to take either. Coffee and rust at the start. Swim brief. The 3.8K Albatross swim starts at nine. Just in front of this, we'll walk you down to the water about five to nine from the Strand Loper restaurant. Oops, 9.30 is, will be the closest the 1.6 Cape Gannett starts. I'll show you a map of where those starts are. It's probably more like 9.40, but I'm saying at the, at the earliest 9.30 because you come into the water, and I'll show you on the map, you only come into the water once the long-distance swimmers, the lead pack of the long-distance swimmers passed your entry point. Same thing with 800-meter oyster catchers. You start probably closer to 10. It won't be before 9.45. 11 o'clock prize giving in the theme conference center, 12 o'clock lunch and live music. Here's the explanation. Here's the Strand Looper restaurant. You're going to walk down to the beach. I'm going to show you the first can with your right shoulder. You're going to swim out to that can. You're going to right shoulder, and then you're going to turn and swim straight into the marina, three kilometers away, just over three kilometers away. We, you will see this can here, which is for the, um, the Cape Gannets, the one milers, and you'll see another can there for the oyster catchers and a swim site. We're going to have swim safety on, on sand paddle boards and in craft. 
um, and on the rubber duck. Um, just a reminder, if you're in trouble, you wave your arm above your head and call for help. You may, in both the triathlon and the long swims, hold on to a sup just for long enough to tell the sup rider that you're in trouble or that you're okay. If you're in any kind of trouble, we'll call the, the uh, rubber duck and you'll take you out of the water. If you can get back to land yourself, obviously that's available too. But you may not move with the sup and you may not stay with the sup for longer than 20 seconds. You've got 20 seconds to tell the person you're in trouble or not and you let go. We had people last year who we had complaints about water safety because some people said to the water safety person, please stay with me. And we then had one whole sup out of 10 lifeguards with one person the whole way to the finish. And then people left their posts and other people swimming had no one in sight. And when the wind came up on Sunday, we had people swimming for almost half an hour without seeing a single life safer. That wasn't cool. So the lifeguards are not going to leave their posts. You've got 20 seconds. You either swim back to the shore or you jump in the rubber duck. So there's the 3.8 all the way in one direction. You can swim with the, your aim. Is Thank you. 